I'm a harm reductionist, and I think a lot of doctors aren't harm reductionists. But I think maybe in psychiatry we're a little bit better at accepting that addiction is something that most people have, and it waxes and wanes, and you know it's normal to have relapses and remissions. Um, but you know the, the the sort of old school doctor is like you know if you get sober I'll treat you, or if you stop using drugs then I'll treat you. A lot of psychiatrists won't treat somebody who's addicted, and and you know how am I supposed to stop if you won't help me? It's kind of crazy. Um, there's a lot of reliance on the disease model when you're dealing with addiction and it takes the power away from the patient. Um, you know, they're sort of, they're powerless. I mean, the whole thing about AA is you have to, you know, the f step number one is admit that you have no control and you're powerless over this and then we can talk. And it's basically substituting in uh, spirituality and spiritualism for the addiction, um, which I'm all for. I think that that's important. I think that there are plenty of people who are addicted who are sort of spiritually bankrupt and they need you know, a new way of relating to the world. Um, but the problem with the disease model is that it takes all the, the control and the responsibility away from the person who's using drugs. And I think it's important to, um, to develop responsibility um, and moderation and you know, to learn how to control yourself and to moderate yourself. And I think that you know, that's a very important life lesson and, and the 12-step model sort of takes that away, I think. There is no moderation, it's just all or nothing. Um, and the doctors are very comfortable with that sort of abstinence-based, all or nothing, you know, either you pass your drug test or you don't. It, speaking of drug tests, I, mean, I, just, I have a huge problem with the idea that somebody gets out of prison and if their urine is dirty, if they're using drugs, they go back into prison. I mean, I just, I don't get this. You know, they haven't they haven't hurt anyone. They haven't done anything wrong. And not, you know, our prisons are completely overcrowded with people who need help and aren't getting it. You know, and they're just sort of being shuttled away and swept under the rug. And we have huge lumpy rugs now <laughs> in this country. Um, and you know, it's unhealthy. I mean, there there absolutely just has to be a better way. I think as a psychiatrist, when I look at our drug policy and I, I look at the way we do things, we're, we're creating more problems than we're solving. And one of the biggest things that we're creating is shame and guilt. Um, you know, because the drugs are illegal, we can't use them openly. We can't learn how to use them more healthfully. We can't teach our children how to use them more healthfully. You know, at least with alcohol, if you have a glass of wine at dinner and you model sort of moderation to your children and they see that you can just have a few sips and not get, get get so out of control. You know, we teach them like this is sort of a healthy way to do it. But with drugs, there's no teaching, there's hiding. You know, where like the parents are going down to the basement to smoke their pot and they're hiding it from their kids and they're lying and the kids are going out with their friends to smoke pot and they're hiding it from their parents and they're lying. And the hiding and the lying creates a lot of shame and a lot of guilt, um, which is uncomfortable. And those feelings need to be quelled and then we end up quelling those feelings with more drugs. So the, the hiding, the shame, creates compulsive use. It ends up creating an addiction, ends up creating problems. Um, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline charge if you have to hide something and, and anxiety and nervousness and that, and that ends up sort of adding to the excitement of the experience of taking drugs and it ends up making the experience more reinforcing. You want to do it again and again because it's exciting. So, you know, the way that our drug policy is set up, it's turning us into addicts. <laughs> you know, if we if you put cookies up on a high shelf and you tell your kid you can't have any of these cookies, that's all they want and they're going to figure out a way to get up there. But if you make the cookies available and the kid knows they can have them whenever they want, it's no big deal, they're here, you can have them, you can not have them, whatever, if you, you know, just, if you're going to eat a cookie, please do it after a meal or please don't do it right before bed or please brush your teeth afterwards. There's rules. We understand, you know, the, these cookies aren't good for you and we explain the situation and there's teaching and they don't hoard the cookies and they don't, you know, wait till you're out and eat all 20 and then throw up. You know, if, if you have access to something and there's open discussion about it and there's teaching and there's education, I mean, this is something else our government is horrible at, is our government doesn't want to teach people what the drugs are, how they are used, what they're good for, what they're bad for, which ones are a little bit safer, how to make things safer. You know, there's all this education that could happen. Um, and with harm reduction, you educate and you find safer ways to do things. You know, people are going to do risky things. People are going to jump out of airplanes. People are going to ride motorcycles. That's, you know, people like adrenaline. And 
the idea is to make sure that they have a parachute and that it's you know, they have an extra parachute and they know how to jump out of an airplane. And if you're going to ride this motorcycle, then you need a helmet. And, you know, it's ways to make risky behavior safer. That's what harm reduction is all about. Condoms are a great example. You know, it's, it's risky to have sex. If you wear a condom, it decreases your risks. So um, our government is not really practicing harm reduction. And, and modern medicine really isn't, to a great extent, practicing harm reduction. So there's not any teaching about how to be safer and how to be more healthy. Um, and the way that our drug policy is set up, it prevents a lot of discussion and teaching and it prevents the modeling of appropriate behavior and the modeling of moderation. And so we don't learn how to moderate. We learn how to sneak and lie and hoard um, and use too much because now we finally have an opportunity to do it. And while nobody's looking quick, you have to hurry up and you know take as many drugs as you can. So um, I feel like the, the issues of shame and guilt um, which are really coming from the fact that the drugs are illegal. They come from the drug policy and they're just making everything worse. And overdoses are primarily a fault of our drug policy. Because the drugs are illegal and they're black market and there's no quality control and they're not labeled and they're not measured, you know, it's much easier to overdose on an illegal drug than a legal drug because if you get a bottle you know what you're getting and it's marked and each pill says that it's 30 milligrams and you count it and you know what you're doing um, but when you're dealing with a powder um, but you know because the drugs are illegal they're they're made more potent and they're sort of refined and they're turned into powders and they're stronger so you have to take less and you don't know how much you're taking and you know there's accidental overdoses every day in this country it's not the drugs fault it's not the addicts fault I mean the problem is that because of our drug policy because it's illegal and there's no quality control and they don't know exactly how much they're taking they're not trying to overdose they're trying to get high they're trying to escape their misery they're trying to transcend their discomfort with their lives um, it's not worth dying over. Uh, I do think that there is a lot of shaming that happens um, in medicine, in the ERs, in the cities, with the way the doctors treat the alcoholics and the drug addicts, and they treat them um, as if they don't deserve to be there and they don't deserve their care, when really these are people who, um, they're sick, they're heart sick, their souls are sick, you know, they need something that they're not getting, and they're turning to drugs because it plugs up a hole. And um, I just, I think the doctors don't see that. They don't get that. And they, you know, they think that these people aren't worth their time.